themes of white supremacy. Yes. So um, thank you for everybody. We're uh, right on time. And Lane, you want to take this? All right. Well, we're going to take this together. I'm just going to, I'm just going to set this up. Uh, so we're now going to ask for six volunteers, six or seven, to to dialogue together about reparations, uh, with Diane and me facilitating that. And uh, the dialogue is going to happen in in a in a virtual inner circle, and then the outer circle is going to be everybody else who's holding and observing and reflecting on some questions that we're going to offer before the dialogue. Uh, and before we ask for volunteers, I just want to frame some of the roles and the positions that I heard um, uh, during the during the 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 breakout room i mean during during the debrief just now uh because these may be kind of starting points for what this dialogue is going to be so i heard uh something about white people being fragile i heard there was like do we need education or not do white people already know it or uh or do we need to educate white people uh I, I heard a thing about poor whites, like are, are poor whites going to want to do this? Is a the whole thing about poor whites or not? Uh, but also I heard, you know, well, poor whites, I saw in the chat, you know, poor whites align themselves with rich whites with this whole racial divide. I heard a big thing about backlash that seemed to be a big topic with a lot of heat to it about the, the backlash or what happens after or uh or whether that's good if there's a backlash it just means we're doing the right thing um and then uh yeah just not taking the responsibility for anybody but yourself uh white people making excuses and no more excuses um and then uh yeah is 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 would this be a personal sacrifice i noticed there there was that yeah, I could, I've made a personal sacrifice before. I, I, I imagine there might be a, a, a reaction to that framing of it. Is that really a personal sacrifice or something? Uh, and then, uh, yeah, is, 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 would there, I guess with the, with, with the backlash, again, people were talking about there's going to be a revolution or a riot if this happens or, 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 or Trump squared is going to get reelected or something like that and how are we going to face that backlash and then dismantling colonialism and capitalism just wanted to recap some of those basic themes that were coming up and seeing if uh so so knowing that those are some of the themes and you heard them as well as i did so sorry uh but uh i just want to ask who would like to volunteer to be um in this part of this inner circle discussion maybe raise your dizina said she would like to volunteer raise your hand or put it in the chat or just speak out okay let me uh uh jordana i think um uh, has raised her hand and jordana great uh, so, uh zenia zenia are you have your okay i'm down here in milwaukee i'm here my, my, my great great grandmother, she's Diane. She died at 19. Yes. Is that Zenia? Zenia? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you, can you do this? Okay. And I spoke okay. to her. Spoke I heard Tom in Milwaukee. Okay. You see Zenia and Jordana and Dizina and Tom. We need two more. Antoine, I saw your hand up. Let's get some white folks in this. Yeah. We we need to have a balance. But you mean Jordana's not white? We no, we got Jordana. We need, we need one more white person. We have Jordana, but we need we need you need some others. They wait. They, I, they, I think I heard I'll Tom it. on it. Tom, yeah, Tom, but, Tom I'm already okay. in No, for, Tom no is, fragility Tom allowed, Milwaukee. people. No fragility allowed. Yeah, okay, Tom is in Milwaukee, and he doesn't. He's not fragile. So Christina raised her hand. Okay, Christina, <laughs> that's good. So now we've got three black people and three white. I'm assuming. I'm I'm doing this eyeballing, 
And I'm assuming we've got three black people. And then I'm assuming we have three white people. So let's go with that. The, the, you look white, you look black. You're looking at phenotypes, Diane, Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> okay, Lane. So, so, be, so, so before Adam, we do this inner circle dialogue, I just want to talk to the outer circle, the folks who are not in this dialogue. You also have an important role in here. You're going to be holding the pot in which this dialogue is going to be cooked. And while you're doing that, I, we want to re ask you to reflect on some questions. Kathy, would you mind putting those questions in the chat? So the questions are, what are you noticing in your body as this dialogue is going on? What do pe what are people saying that you resonate with? What moment is hot for you? And are you shifting or changing your position or feelings? Okay, hey, let's, is, let's, oh, sorry, sorry. And Go what ahead. is being said that makes you feel something? So those are the questions. You see all those in the chat? So, yeah, yeah so, what are you noticing in your body? What do people say that you resonate with? What moment is hot for you? Are you shifting positions inside yourself and feelings? And what's being said that makes you feel something? So, so Kathy has those in, uh, Catherine has those in the chat. And Adam, um, can you swap out uh, Sundiata for uh, Xenia? Thanks, Hi, Sundiata. Hi, Sundiata. I'll miss you. Xenia. Xenia, okay. <laughs> so just to make sure we have, okay, so, Okay, so there's supposed to be another uh, black person who was it? So maybe we get soon the other. So there's supposed to be three and three. I see. Three. It was Mr. I Hines. see one, two, three. I see Antoine. three white people. Let Antoine rock. Antoine Hines, Mr. Hines. Okay, okay. Thank you, Sundiata. Open the game, coach. He's ready. Okay. Is Lane supposed to be spotlighted? Uh, yeah, Lane is spotlighted. Uh, and Diane, Adam, you should be Adam, spotlighted Adam, too. Adam, you want to spotlight me and you want to spotlight Antoine. A N T I O N E. Yes. There we go. Okay. And if everybody else could turn your videos off. And, and, um, and uh, Adam, could you please disable the chat for right now? Um, hold on one second. If nobody else put anything in the chat. Uh, Catherine, would you mind putting that, uh, putting those questions in one more time and then let's disable the chat. It's going to be uh, distracting for the folks in, in this inner circle discussion to, if, if there's people saying stuff in the chat all the time. So let's just disable that after Catherine puts those things in the chat. And let me ask all the people that are spotlighted to unmute yourselves. This isn't going to be everybody speak in turn. We're all going to contribute all the time. And we're going to facilitate this, of course. So, uh, I, and I just want to say, uh, okay, your, how do you feel? Let your, uh, let's be authentic. Let's take the opportunity to authentically feel and speak what we feel, not what you think. Don't say I think. What you think. I'm, I feel. We want to. We want to. We want this to be about how you feel. I am outraged. I, I just want to say because sorry, Tom. Because feelings are what drive decisions. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Feelings are critical. I am outraged at the injustice that has gone on for incredibly way too long. I mean, how can we even say way too long? It's it should never have been in the first place, but here we are, right? And it's it's very very bad. I'm outraged. Right. Um, so I've been triggered, and I know this goes against a lot of what we're talking about, but I this idea of nonviolence and love and empathy and dialogue to get to reparations to me is, to me personally is a non-starter. And I know that hurts other people to hear it, but it's just how I feel. I believe it's gotta come down to land, housing and money and whatever else. And, and, and the, we've been talking for ages, we've been studying, 
this for ages and I don't know if it was Mark or a few people are like, you know, you know, this is a debt and it's not really negotiable in terms of how people are feeling. And that's how, that's my position on it. Yeah, Jordana, I tend to agree with that. Um, but I, I do, I tend to agree with that and, and the fact that it shouldn't be based on feelings. It should just be something that happens. Um, even if people are forced to do it, you know, pay reparations. But I also am part of the Racial Justice Collaborative because I, I do feel so strongly about Diane's call for dialogue and that how much it's helped me personally just talking about race and talking about my own whiteness and my place in, in race and privilege and all that, um, which has brought me to, yes, of course, um, I should pay reparations. America should pay reparations. Um, so yeah, I don't, I'm not um, into the love stuff. I, I hate saying that out loud, but no, I'm not really into that. But but I do feel like the the discussion and the dialogue and 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 that that process is important. Um, I'd like to say, like right now in this moment, I feel extremely tense. My chest mm. is tight, my mm. throat is tight. Mm. Um, I'm so happy to be here in this conversation, but I feel like I'm ready to mm. um, cry. It's mm. yeah, extremely um, mm. I can go to the right and the left of me. I live in Central Florida, and I can see Confederate flags hanging outside of people's homes. Oh and so it doesn't feel safe for me to have these conversations where I live. Mm. Um, and I know that it's important. And so I feel the tendency to want to do it a safe way mm. because mm. I fear um, people are crazy in here. People yeah. are fight these white people who feel like they have something to lose by um, there being justice for everyone are fighting for their lives. And just so I feel afraid and I know it's a conversation that has to be made. And so I put in the chat, like, I want to go broad. Like when you start talking about asking individual white folk to give money, I'm like, they're going to come to my door mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can't like, I can't risk that. So I look at the broad, when we look at veterans, like everybody loves a veteran, <laughs> you know, can we start there? And it feels more, it feels safer to me yeah. to, to get where can we find the least common denominator mm. where you're not going to have people uprising. It scares me. Diazina, are you talking about looking at things that you consider are quantifiable? Like I didn't, through the GI Bill, I didn't get X, Y, and Z, and this is the value, or like they talked about Manhattan Beach, uh, Kathy did, it's quantifiable, um, but it leaves so many people out. It does. And I, and for me, it's a first step because we're going from, there are people in my neighborhood don't, who don't think that I'm an equal citizen, that I don't belong here. So to go from that to having an individual white person have a tax levied against them because their ancestors were white, I think that we need a bridge. And so for me, the bridge is what can we agree upon? Did the, you know, the first round or the first wave these are Black people who served in World War I, World War II, it's documented. And then for people who it's not documented, where the records were lost, they can, we can start a, a, a lawsuit or an exploration. But it's like, where can we come where people aren't going to get their guns and start acting crazy? Because that's yeah. very real in the South. So I know it leaves everybody out for now, but it's a first step. And I'm really, <laughs> you know, it's like, what... How can we do this in an incremental way? And what you said, you described it as rounds of reparations. I've never thought of it that way. And I think that's so interesting, like so interesting. Mm -hmm. Rounds of reparations. It doesn't all have to happen. It could be the Manhattan, it could be land. It could be the, the millions and millions of acres that were owned by black farmers that have been taken through just outright theft, fraud, uh, all of those are quantifiable and right. what their families would have received. And I, I actually, I love that idea and I'm writing that down. 
Um, so thank you. Thank you. So it, yeah. I just, I just want to say, I'm sorry. Go on, Zenia. No, no, go ahead, Lane. I, I, just, I just wanted to say, Dazina, I, I hear the fear. And and I also hear you say go broad, and at the same time you're you're saying it's it's broad, but you're but you're saying let's focus actually broad let's appeal. this first, and then this first. So yeah, I just wanted to frame that. Go on. I'm sorry to interrupt you there. Can I jump uh, in here? Uh, let, let's say you. Oh, let's say you, and then and then Antoine. Thank oh, you. I'm sorry. Then Tom, go ahead. Sorry. I ha I actually, Dizina, I actually have a, a visceral reaction to that, oddly as it seems. Um, and one, because I think I feel like I've been chasing, chasing fear my whole life. I'm done chasing fear. I'm done being bullied. I'm done being pushed. I'm done being Amen. declared and defined that I should be doing something or something another way because, but I get your point that there's something at stake, my life. <laughs> my life is at stake if I, I stand up, but I feel like um, <laughs> I've had enough. I've, I've had enough of being placating to, to my own fear because at the end of the day, it really is my fear that I'm, I'm dicta that's dictating my reaction and how I, dic how I drive and determine my intentions. Um, I'd like to, let's see, oh, the, but I do feel like um, and, and, and so I'm race recovery, right? I am pro-Black, decolonized Blackness, that's me. Um, but I, oh, I also realize that at the heart of this is a deconstruction of our social system. Like it is the, I mean, we have to, it has to be deconstructed and reconstructed. There's no way, I don't believe, for us to come in and potentially rebuild a system that honors and um, in eagle, easily sort of moves into reparations without a deconstruction of the system that held up that whole um, legacy of indebtedness in the first place. It, it, like, so to think that we can do this nicely and to think that we can do this with, with, with just asking permission and is not gonna happen. It, and so we're gonna, some, some of us are gonna have to be on the front line and take the heat and take the hit. Some of us will stay in the background to sort of hold a, hold a fortified at the front but it's going to have to, it's have to include some of that ugly stuff. Thank you. So we want to pull in uh, Antoine uh, and Tom and um, the, the, we, we need white people on the front lines. This mm -hmm. ugly stuff and stepping up is not going to be black people on the front lines. It's got to be white people so that's what we're here to talk about. And Antoine, go ahead. Okay. okay. So yeah, definitely. Um, I'm saying you said about military. You know, I got my ID right here. Yeah, military. <laughs> so I and, I and I dealt with racism in the military. You know, I was in a nuclear um nuclear program, and I was one out of fifty people in that um in my class. I was one. I was the the the, the chocolate chip, if you want to put it in that you know in the bunch and stuff. But just that knowing that only so many they let into that program because and, and i believe racism and everything regardless of your education some of those things have changed now but still i went through those things and the military the government could be while these people are coming through the military could be setting up a, a, another phase of reparations through that right there starting from military in the past going towards the future as we serve our country and, and we, I mean, I raised my hand to die for my country. For everybody on the screen, I, I raised my hand to die. You know, um, at any point in time, I'm, I'm here to, to um, protect and serve. Um, and at the same token that I feel, I'm so confused. As being a mathematician, a nuclear engineer, I'm all about logic and what's there and what's the correct way and looking at what's in front of me. And it's so illogical for this thing, like you said, where it could still be going on. To see someone, people, thousands of people dying, you know, that are one color. To see someone to put money towards that, to see people to go to a place and, and put nooses up, there's still a lynch bill out there, people. <laughs> it's still a lynch bill. It's just, I feel so confused and just so, why? And then I look at my daughter and say that, at any point, 
the time she can go out and die because of the color of her skin. Why? So confused. Take a deep breath. Wow. Tom, you were gonna say something? I, I just want I just want to frame something first. Sorry about that, everybody. I, I heard you I heard you say, Antoine, I raised my hand to die. And and I connecting that to what Diane said, it's gotta be white people on the front line. So it's not just are we willing because because of the climate of this country is not just are we willing to, you know, be taxed or whatever it is, but are we willing to stand up to protect black people when the shit hits the fan? Yeah, because I didn't I didn't I didn't raise my hand just for black people. I raised my hand for every there color. You every, there you go. Everybody. There you go. You raised your hand to to embrace a system that was equitable for everyone, not just black people. And but you raised your hand knowing what the system is. You raised mm. your hand anyway. Wow. Anyway. Wow. Wow. And yeah. to think that your that our ancestors did that without even having what black people have today. Like what did they have back during World War I for them to do what you did, Antoine? Mm. Like, mm. and that's why I feel like the honor to mm. them. Mm. Like, how do you stand up and fight for a country that spits in your face because you know that you're fighting for generations to come like my ancestors they didn't know my name but they did what they did so that i could have a life that was better than theirs yeah yeah thank and you i'm not going anywhere else for your service I, I thank you i'm not going anywhere else i'm gonna be here <laughs> my ancestors built the advancements that allowed this country to be a place that is best to live in, I'm not going anywhere else. So we're gonna make it happen here. Mm. I can see why people might want to leave, but I'm li I'm living right here, and I'm gonna get mine right here. And you deserve that. And I, I think more. I hope more white people get on board to help you do that, and to, you know, support you in that. Well, it's not oh, a matter God. of helping her. It's a matter of getting back our humanity, our humanity, and and disgorging all the wealth that has come to us. It's not about us helping. Black people don't need help. And in fact, they, in some ways, at least the black people I know, would love just some land and to get away from us. Yeah. <laughs> to get away yes. from fucking Lord. white people. I don't care if you're progressive. It's all fucked up. It is, and I know it. And, and so let's just be honest. It's not yeah. about helping black people. It's just working. We're the really sick sure. party here. Come on, yeah. we're Very, very sick. All well, of, when Zenia says, I want mine and I want it here, I yeah. want that for her too. That's, yes. that's what I mean. Yeah, but she's only going to, I mean, we need to work on us and not say, oh, what can I do to help Zenia? Of course I want to support her. But I can't just sit there and be like, oh, you know, I'm a good white person. What can I do? That's the last thing. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Zina. It's the last right. thing you would ever need is any of us trying to get in there and say, what, do you, what can we do for you? Right. We haven't worked on ourselves yet. And that That's is a true. huge problem. That's where the dialogue comes in. It That's does, where the lovey-dovey shit comes in, even dialogue. though I don't like it either. But it has to be a dialogue among us with whatever yeah. black person has the fortitude to get in there and and do that with us if that's necessary. But, you know, that's to me what the huge problem is. And to be honest, I, I don't see that happening. And again, I go back to the tort model of just we owe a debt. And then whatever talk goes on around that good, I, you know, I don't really care because I don't think that's going to help. The talk. Say something after you, Zena. There was a study done, and you might have all seen it, where the kids were shown two pictures, and the one picture was with a black boy on the ground and a white boy standing behind a swing, and then the next picture was the white boy on the ground and a black boy standing behind the swing, and they held this picture up to two different groups of kids. Well, they, you know, so they looked at all different shades and backgrounds and black and white kids, 
And they asked the kids to interpret what they saw in the images. And the black kids were the kids who said something compassionate. Oh, he fell off the, he fell off mm -hmm. the thing. Oh, he was waiting for his turn. The white kids were like, he got pushed off or he didn't get his turn to get on. So I agree with you, Jordana. This is not black people's work. This is a white person's mm -hmm. job to, begin, to begin really fashion your in your mind a different, a different paradigm about where the problem lies. Because the problem doesn't lie with black people needing something. We've no. all, we've gotten we've been able to manage to stay here, the, being put down and pushed back for so many generations. We don't like we. If you gave us a head start, we would leave everybody behind. It's right. just, I think white people have to get to the point where they get to the place where they understand what is holding them up. Correct. And, and related to that, Xenia, so Diane and I, and Diane, you can speak to this. You and I have looked at photographs. We've looked at photographs of lynchings. We've looked at photographs in Boston where you've got the, the white people kind of standing around. I always look in the white people's faces because I like, what are you doing there? Like, how is it possible? And Pharaoh and Mark, they talked about you know, in Boston, you know, grown up, grown ass mothers, you know, throwing uh, rocks. And I mean, like, what is wrong with you? It's messed up. Right? It's and I look in those faces and you and I have talked about that, that, that. And then I also look in the faces, by the way, in at a black wedding at a majority of black wedding or a black event, there's some white people in there or a baptism by a river. And there's somehow some white people. I want to know who those white people are. How did they go against the grain of the rest of that trash of white people? Like, who are those white people? I want to know what, what's in them yeah. that's, that's a, that they feel comfortable with Black people. They were invited, one would hope, to these very private and heartfelt events, you know, primary life events, baptisms, and so forth. Like, they're, they are with Black people, and this is going back decades, so... I want to know about both groups of white people. Yeah. The second group being quite small. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I think this is, when we look at the beginning, it all started with um, commodities and capitalism and, and what are we trading to get something? And the indigenous as well as African-Americans was the, the commodity and stuff. And it became, a, right now, it's a, as we're talking about mental health, it's a mental health instability as well as the ethical instability. We need to, when we talk about a, a cultural mindset change in our community, because we still have generations teaching the same unethicalness to say that this person is inhuman to another person, that they are devalued, that they do not have what you have, teaching people on, on continue on, that is a cultural mindset we need to change and capitalism I'm okay with capitalism and everything. I want to go get my um, McDonald's and everything. It's so, a, you know, cap but it's the unethicalness of capitalism to say that, okay, we have 30 black people. How do we utilize them to get more money? That's that mindset that we need to change. Yeah. That is still there's, here. There's nothing ethical about capitalism. So get that out of your thinking. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not, it, there's no ethics in capitalism. I want to bring Tom into the discussion. Um, he's he's thoughtful looking. So Tom, where, <laughs> where are you in this? And is anybody going to speak to the white people who are against this? Can, but Tom, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. <clears throat> I've happily waited my turn. Yes. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's so many things that could be said, but uh, um, Jordana wants to know about those white people at the wedding or the baptism. So my wife is going to be the maid of honor for a very dear black woman friend of ours because we love each other. If you don't like the word love, well, get over yourself. I'm going to tell you something here. White supremacy exists because of hatred. If you read Wynton Marsalis after George uh, Floyd was dead, was killed, he was talking to his daughter and his daughter couldn't, couldn't get to the right answer as to why those police do that. And he said, because they enjoy it. Yeah, they enjoy it. Wynton Marsalis, I have the article on my computer. 
That's hatred. That's hatred. So I come from the place of an individual personal relationship with any human being that I encounter. And I expect to bring kindness to those people. Well, you don't want to call it love, call it kindness and generosity. Now, the problem in America has to do with, it does, it's institutional, but how are we going to change it? Now, I'm not saying that any of you are wrong. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just telling you, this is my approach. Mm -hmm. We have to change people's hearts. White people have to change their hearts. Yes, white people have to help white people change their hearts. And I've been doing work to do that here in, in Milwaukee. And I've, one of the ways I've tried to do this through the Catholic Church. Oh, are they racist? Oh, I'll tell you. That's a tough one. This. You know, and I hear and I honor what, what some of you have said. You know, uh, Xenia, yeah, I'm going to get mine now and I'm tired. She didn't say I'm tired, but she, she said I'm done chasing fear. And I agree with you. Now I'm going to make another idea here. A number of my, my, my people are Native American. The Native American people, when they were getting put on reservations, they said there were those warriors who said, I would rather die fighting than live and die a slow death on the reservation. This is where I think perhaps Xenia is coming from. Do we want to die? This gentleman here, Antoine, he put his life on the line for a system that's totally fucked up, as Georgiana wanted to say, as she said. So again, and, and, and he spoke about mentality. He said, right, mentality. So what is the mentality? The mentality is about hatred. The mentality is about fear. White people are afraid of black people. Black people are afraid of white people in some instances. Conversation. I bring people together who look, who are white and black, and we have conversation about what it is to be human. And we, we can talk about those issues that divide us that are causing this tension the fucked up system. I do this in person on Zoom, people every month. Conversation, the conversational model that uh, Diane promoted. Absolutely, absolutely, it works and you can do it and you can create safety. And why do you, how can you create safety? You create safety by being kind, by showing kindness one on one, one person at a time. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't try to change it systematically. I get that. So let me just talk, comment on that part. Oh, hold of my on just one sec. I just had, can, 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 can I, can I just say one thing about something that you just said? Sure. I'm appreciating what you're saying about kindness, about love, about one-on-one -on -one, and when that one person is talking to that one person, it, we're not on the same level right? One, one person's being pushed down, one person's being pushed up. And so that conversation can't happen. Oh, we're just human. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes, we are just human. And that conversation has to happen that way. But, but with, without the realization that one is being pushed down and one is being pushed up, that conversation is not going to necessarily go. It is going to go because in those moments, the person who's black, who's speaking to me, knows they're safe. They know they're honored. They know how much I care about them because they know how different I am from the people who they know in Milwaukee. They know they're safe and that is absolutely different. And it does make a difference. Um, but you can you say that for every you black person that you know? Or that you could encounter? Yeah. Yeah, the people yeah, are who you presuming they are that they're safe? Are you presuming a black person you talk to knows they're safe? Or do you ask them? Like, how do you know no, no, no. that you're saying that? When they're in conversation with me, when they're in my presence, I can create the feeling, the feeling of safety. I think Jordana's question is But how do you know that? How do you know that you're doing that for someone? Because they speak from their heart to me. They speak from their heart to me and they're willing to tell me whatever it is that they want to say. It's, it it's authentic. There were those, there were those six things. It's authentic. That's what I'm talking about, authentic. It's when you come from the place of deep love that you can reach that other person from their heart because they know they feel it. 
Well, you know what? You know what, Tom? I'm I'm here listening to you talk about this place of deep love. I don't feel it. From so, who? and if I have to wait until I get into a personal conversation with you, and you and you somehow magically make me feel that I'm going to go right back to these spaces, and I'm not going to feel it. So that is people get married black and white and until she or he calls that their their husband or wife a nigger then they feel like they had love but but there's a lot of xenia yeah I'm on you go uh, ahead <laughs> that's exactly it but you know what tom um to your i i i'm following up with what diana said diane said because i do feel like I've seen kindness, but then I've also seen ki kindness, uh, hatred cloaked in kindness. Mm -hmm. They, you know, in the South we say kill them with kindness because you gonna kill them, but you are gonna be kind doing it. Um, the one thing I would say that if if there was anything that white people could do potentially to demonstrate a capacity to be embraced by blackness is to stand up against white supremacy. If I saw a white person standing up against white supremacy, then I would feel safe. Then I would say, oh, well, maybe that's somebody who potentially can align themselves outside of the, the benefits that whiteness offers them and look at me as a human being. If they can't step se separate from white supremacy and they can't stand in the, in the market space of American society and do that, I don't trust them. I don't care how kind you are. But I, I, also, I, just I have been personally threatened by white supremacists here in Milwaukee. I have stood up to get against white supremacists here in Milwaukee, and I have personally been threatened by them. And I'm lucky that I'm not dead yet. Yeah. How's that for you? Yeah. So I, thank you. I just want to say quickly, Tom, that you said white supremacy exists because of hatred. And I would suggest white supremacy exists because of money and power. Yes. And yeah, hatred Agreed. comes along with it because the hatred dehumanizes Agreed. the people who are the butt of, uh, meaning the, the, I don't want to say victims, but the people affected by white supremacy, it's not hatred. If it was hatred, we could get rid of it. It's the power of money and yeah. power that keeps white supremacy in place. So I just wanted to say and, that. And, that, and that's why, and that's why yeah. capitalism is no medium for getting, yeah. for getting to where we want to go. Correct. So, so, I just, Lane, I know, Lane, Lane, I you want to I want to throw, I throw the same thing out. James Baldwin said, the reason people think it's important to be white is that they think it's important to not be black. Yes. And black yes. represents something that has no power and has no leverage. When mm. you're white and you think about the things you get or don't get, you're saying, am I getting something good because I'm white or am I getting it because I'm not black? Which yes. goes to that point yes. of James Baldwin. So so <laughs> I just want to frame that that we're, we're now having two conversations. There's the conversations about reparations and harm and redress of harms, and also the conversation about how can we have the dialogue? Can we dialogue? It, we, we may think that we're making a safe place for black folks to talk to white people, but, but do we know that? And what actually are the conditions to make it safe? Dizina, you've been trying to speak. And, excuse, excuse me, and beyond the circle. So, you know, Tom, we may be in a conversation and I may in that situation feel like you are being authentic and, and, I, and I feel safe in that space. And my thing is, and so what? Like Diane said, we, I leave that space and then I go into my neighborhood or I go into the next space and we're only as safe as we come in, right? So you can't make me feel safe. If I come in wounded and traumatized, you can do whatever you want to. I'm not going to feel safe in that space. So that go, c coming full circle back around to that healing spot, like I know that I have a lot. I have it on audio and the book. <laughs> I have both. Um, so, you know, that's the work, like taking it out of the individual conversations into the circles, into the large groups, into action 
where it's real because talk is cheap. And I would bet, um, Dizina, if we got to the place where we were outside the individual and into the circles and it felt like that was the place where this was really beginning to take root, reparations would be a simple conversation. We would not be fighting about how to make reparations possible. People would understand, the blinders would be removed and people would then see, oh, oh, wait, their, their humanity is the same as my humanity. How, well, oh. Yeah. And, and they would and they would see how their humanity has been chipped away at so much that there's hardly a human speck Ooh, left. Diane. Oh my goodness, girl. Mm. And they would work for that for themselves. Yeah. Yes. Themselves. Yes. Their yes. soul are their souls are shrunk and lacking and about to disappear. Yes. That's right. That's right. I, I'm I'm here not just for your liberation, but for my liberation. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I, I, and and that and that has to do with and 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 for that, I'll put my skin in the game. Well, and that's why that's why I think um, I, I can visualize how because when you say uh, like uh, um, all the marches and everything, you see a brigade of people and everything and the, to see white people stand up in front, but not just stand up in front of a brigade of white supremacy, but to see they have their kids with them and their families with them for us, to, for their whole family system to stand in front of us and support us, but then to turn around and give back because of the privilege of what they're getting to give back some of the things and, and put it in place in the policies and procedures in, in, in a systematic way. And I, I wanted to say the other thing, I spoke to, her, I was at an event and I was speaking to a police officer, a black police officer, and we talked about the, the, the church and the police officers and stuff. And what if the church had brung in some of the young men and women black to the police station, you know, um, whatever it's called, the morning report or whatever, every morning they get to see these young black faces of what they're going out, who they should be protecting, all of the people they should be protecting, but they can see it. And then when we talk about, you know, I, I work with United Way, when you talk about the campaign fund and everything, you got to donate. What if they remember those black kids and this is how they can actually put money into these black kids inside this community? You're not just there to make money and protect the, and make money as a police officer, but you're there to protect everyone there, but you're also there to put something back in that community. If we can set but, that but, up. But Antoine, let me, let me, while you're talking about uh, people, white people bringing their families, that is not something they don't understand. Look back at the lynching pictures. They mm. brought their babies on their shoulders to point and they watch people burn. They Lotus. cut pieces off. They taught their children. Their grandparents were with them. That's what they taught their children. I and that's on. why it's still in their hearts today. It's passed down generation after generation. I, I hear you, Diane, and I hear the fire in what you're saying. And what I hear Antoine saying is that those white families he's talking about are bringing their children to protect against the white supremacists. And that's, that's, that's a new model. Yeah, that's good. But, but, but I'm just pointing out that white people understand what it means to bring your family. So let's, so let's, let's, but, but let's move it beyond the George Floyd's because you can see how quickly that is gone. And Diane, you know what? sorry. Sorry, I just want to check in with you, Diane, because 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 we're over the time that yeah. we had allotted to this, and this is so good and so important. <laughs> and I'm also wondering about bringing in other people because I think other people probably have other yeah. important things okay. to say about yeah. this. But I, I don't want to stop what's happening at the same time. Okay, so this is a, a this is an opportunity. Yes, Hold please, up. Diane. I just want to make a closing comment. Hand up too. Being in this just being in this fishbowl, Xenia, am I saying Xenia? I want you all to know that just however many minutes we've been in here, I'm holding 
my fear by the hand instead of being behind it. Okay. And I'm ready. Okay. We've got to do this and I can't be afraid. And so I appreciate you and everything that people have said here because that fire and the passion and the safety and the serving the country and the reparations and all of that makes me know that I can do this. And I'm ready to put myself out there and ready to bring people in because this is real. This is vulnerable. This is authentic. This is what's going to make it happen. Thank you. And so I appreciate each of you and I appreciate this process and Lane and Jordana and Diane and Farrell and the Racial Justice Collaborative. Like, yeah, me and Fear, we're right here. Right. Thanks, Diana. Thank you, Dizina. And me and my fear. And we appreciate you, Dizina. You know that. Right. I just I'm scared too. Yeah, I mean, and this is probably going to be opening another can of worms. Um, but Tom, I did have a visceral reaction to something that you said moments before, and I'm not sure how to unpack it with this group, but it felt like performative. It, in some respects, it's, it, I felt like you were saying, you know, my wife does this. I have this book. I stand in front of the white supremacist. It felt somewhat performative. And, I, and as I was thinking about it and thinking through it in my mind, I'm going back to what Lane said about how it is the, it actually isn't about how you, maybe I need to reframe what I said. It isn't about how you look to Black people. It is the work that you do for you to recover the humanity that's been lost in this process for for white people, not for you as a person standing in for black people. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with kind of how to land on that, Tom. I hate to hate to sort of throw that in here. It feels like a like we say in psychiatry, a doorknob statement, because you're on your way out the door and let me drop this bomb. But I thought I if this is going to be a true authentic process, I felt like I had to offer that. But Xenia, you, it, I call it white bona fides, and I've seen it in lots of groups. You'll have an older woman like, I marched with Martin Luther King. I've got a black grandson. Like, be, they want to like lay out what they have as if that's going to make them more palatable. Now, I don't know if Tom was doing it, that or not, but that's what I call it is the white bona fides. I just want to apologize to you, Xenia. Xenia or Xenia? What do you say? It's, a, it's like an S. It's a soft S. Xenia. Xenia. So, Xenia, I, I want to apologize to you because I actually thought that same thing when Tom said that, and mm. I didn't say anything, and I left that to you to say, and mm. it shouldn't have been a doorknob comment. It should have been right then in that moment. And in that moment, I wasn't keeping you safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go on, Diane. So, so let's do what uh, Lane suggests. We don't have long, so we want to bring everybody back in. So I think the easiest way to do this is if, um, Adam, if you can remove the spotlights, and we're all still here, and, and not, only, not only will we re remove the spotlights, but let's everybody else uh, now I just clicked the gallery view. So now everybody's here on my screen. Take off your, bring your videos back. Say, so the questions that we had for the, uh, for this uh, session, uh, Lane, can you repeat the question so people can. Hey, hey, Diane, can we also, the chat is still disabled. Should we enable it again? Yeah, but first, let me just read the questions first or okay, I'm going to lose them. Go ahead, go ahead. What are you noticing in your body? What were you noticing in your body? What did people say that you resonated with? Did you feel your position or your feelings changing? What moment was hot for you? And what was said that made you feel something? If people could could address those questions as, as we're <clears throat> briefing, that would be great. So the easiest way to do this is for people to unmute themselves and speak up. Keith has had his hand up yeah. for a long time. Okay, Keith. Yeah, um, my experience of Tom was, I actually wanted to hear more of what Tom was saying. I think he was gonna go on something else, but he never did. Um, but I felt Tom uh, brought up some things, you know, I mean, he used the word love, but the idea, I feel that to a confident heart, 
trials are like a child's play. In other words, if you're confident that what you're doing is humane and is right, then you just go do it, you know? And, and if you have that, things will work themselves out. And if they don't, at least you lived a life of, uh, you know, with confidence about what is right and, and you did it to the end. So I didn't pick up on Tom as being, you know, I mean, that wasn't ingenuous. I actually wanted to hear more of what he said, whether I agreed or not, I just wanted to hear more. But I just think people should just be confident from their heart and go out and, and, and just, you know, live what's right. And if it means you are afraid, so what? Be afraid, but still do it. Yeah, let me stand behind Keith on that one. Just do it. And if and you'll and you'll learn and you'll grow. Let's just do everybody do what they what they feel in their heart. And and let's and because that's who we are. Lou wanted to say something. And and John's got his hand up too. Oh. Yeah. And uh, hi, everybody. And so I am in the car because I had to go somewhere. You probably can see me. I am watching the road, I promise you. Um, I mean, I had so many feelings. Uh, all of have been expressed at some level. But there was one thing that keeps standing out to me is I think unless and until we decide to be activists, meaning doing things, whatever those struggles are, tenants work, education work, prison work, whatever it is, that's how white supremacy shows itself. So I, I love the dialogues. They were beautiful. I don't want people to hear otherwise. I do think, though, that as a racial justice collaborative, we have to think about ways that we are going to get ourselves involved in the actual fights that people are involved in today. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Lou. Who else was it, Lane? John, but now I only see his bicycle. Okay. There you are, John Kimball. Oh, sorry. I, I, I've just finished a chicken and I've finished a loaf of bread in the <laughs> oven. I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I had to sit on my hands to watch the group. Uh, brought a lot to the forefront. Um, and uh, Jordana can attest to this. I used, used to be probably one of the most patriotic people in the country. Um, we'll get into arguments with friends and family over this country. Whenever they would say something negative about this country, man, I was up in arms. I even stormed out of a room several times as a result. But now, the work needs to be done, but do I think it's gonna change? Do I think the hearts are gonna change? I'm planning my exit strategy. I'm leaving. Not that I'm giving up the fight, I'm taking care of me. See, you don't get in the boat until you check and make sure the life preserver's there. Okay, so you don't prepare for this reparations without making sure you've also prepared for the possible repercussions. Is it gonna change? Look at the history of man. Country after country, people after people. I hope it changes. Do I think it's gonna take Jesus himself coming back if you believe in that line for it to change? Yeah, I'm going to work and hope it does. But as for me, hey, man, this place is broke. I'm out. And, and you know what, what John is now? John is speaking to a near hopelessness about the heart of this country. And if you look back at Eyes on the Prize, if you look back at the civil rights movement, People had hope. They believed that it was about education. And if they just could get educated, they would be accepted. Black people believed that 
Black people know that's not true. Marcus Garvey and, and, and uh, Malcolm X were right. Just leave us alone. Just leave us alone. We'll be fine. You know, look, when, with integration, look what happened to black educators. I went from having lots of black teachers to none. To none. Welcome to the black teachers. You know what? Can I, can I jump in, John? Yes, sir. I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to mute myself. Hey, brother. I was feeling a lot of what you said, and I've studied plenty of uh, philosophers, history, you know, historians who said the same thing, and some of them did leave. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, there was something that Jordana said that I laughed for about five minutes, and I missed half of what was being said. She said... <laughs> <laughs> she said, if you give us some money, give them some money and some land and leave them the hell alone, that's what they want. <laughs> and I laughed for a long time. I'm not trying to make it a bigger thing than it was, but it was so true. It's like a lot of us just want to be allowed to be human beings and live our lives. And if you keep poking the tiger, that tiger one day is going to wake up knowing that it's a tiger. Right. It's going to be hell. So we trying not to do that. That's why some people are saying, I'm going to leave. Some people are saying, I'm going to have to walk with my fear in my hand so that I can live my life. Yep. Like my friend Dizena said, this is what people who look like me and who look a little, you know, on this side of that shade, we deal with this all the time, every day, like all the time. That pendulum thing that, that, that Lane took us through earlier, I was thinking that that's the pendulum that we deal with like constantly. When we decide, am I gonna go outside today? When I was in high school, I remember some days wondering if I was gonna go outside and something was gonna happen to me. And that feeling never changed and I'm not a high school anymore. I used to put on KRS-One in my head and play you're slipping just so I could have a mentality to deal with the streets. And I didn't live in the roughest neighborhood even in my city. Right. This is real for so many of us in this, you know, children. I just listened to the whole thing. Oprah got nothing on this as far as reality. Right, right. The man has always kept it real and I'm gonna shut my mouth now. Let some of you speak. I, I, I feel for Diazina because she lives in Central Florida. And I know what Central Florida is like. <laughs> I live in South Florida. And we have our own issues. But, you know, that's Central Florida. You know, that's Clansville, USA, still, to this day. I want, well, I want to thank say, you. Thank you, everybody. Um, go ahead. Antoine will be the last. Yeah, one last thing. Um, and, I, I, and I think um, I'm a uh, sinner. Say it wrong now. <laughs> I thank you for um, being honest in what you said with Tom. So I'm actually going to be honest and open to what something you had said earlier, and it was between you and um, and Laura. So and it's a situation that happens out here that we 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 talk about white savior, but we also have black savior. And earlier, um, Laura said something honest in that you know that I do have privilege, I do have this, but Senator, you you automatically jumped in there to almost say something to almost console her and stuff and i think we do this on both ends we we're, we're consoling someone when you should be like okay thank you get up get on your feet and and fight with me now here's my here's my cash app and everything too you know let's do this together <laughs> and, and and let's do this you know I, I, i'm just being honest and instead of babying another um community Knowing that they know what has happened in the community, knowing that white privilege and white supremacy is alive, understanding that, but don't console so that you want to put them back in the house and put them back to bed while you're still fighting. Allow them to get up, read this book and everything, watch this video, come alongside with me. I'm going to lead the fight and everything, guide you along the way, but allow us to do this together. And then the, the reparations becomes now you put together a plan, like you got a budget, you got, you're, got you have investments, invest in this new model to invest into a community that you that your ancestors put down. 
you know, over years and stuff like that. But yes, that the, the whole consoling book back, back and forth, we need to really look at that and call ourselves on it. I love that. Can I just jump in? I know we got to go. Yes, go Antoine, ahead. Thank you for that. I would say, though, that was not my intention. My intention was because I don't want her living in guilt because guilt, it doesn't have activity to it. Guilt doesn't get you any progress or any movement. I need her out of her feelings and into pro into into some action. And I don't need her waddling in self pity or guilt or nothing like that. So yes, but I totally agree with you. Thank you for bringing that up. This is so this is so exciting, Elaine. Let me call on Lane to say a few words to end this for us. We appreciate everybody here so much. I'm going to say the few words to end this. I don't know. Well, you say a few words and I'll come back. <laughs> I want you, I want to hear your voice at the end of this. I am just so moved by what everybody is saying right now. I, I, I don't, I don't have words right now. I, I'm just so appreciative of what everybody's saying. And, and, uh, and I want to hear from you, Diane and, and Dizina is so good at closing us out too. I'd love to hear from her too. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, I think the same thing. Um, uh, Dizina, can you just where, where are you? Where, what words can you say now? So the words that come to me are. Um, oh. Holy crap on a cracker. <laughs> the vulnerability shared, the authenticity, the loving call outs, um, the pulling people up, um, the pulling ourselves up, the just being in the fire. This is what the racial justice collaborative creates. The people that come into this space the people who are attracted to this work are already, we are already divinely inspired to do this work and we found a place. And so what's on my heart is to acknowledge the organizers. Diane, I don't think you sleep. I don't. Lane, you are far, you, you're, you know, <laughs> you're, you're right there too. And the education and the love that you all put into the space is felt at such a deep level that we must keep this going. We must fund this initiative handsomely <laughs> because these conversations, at least in my world, aren't happening. They're not happening at this level of depth. And so my word is to know that every word said today, every tear that's been dropped, every, every tight chest are all seeds to what we are in this for. We're planting seeds. And when we see that bar graph of how long slavery existed and how long and how long and seeing that we're in this little spot because we have this, amount of power, we don't have to wait 200 years to get to where we need to be. So, so my word is this, keep your feet grounded, keep our hands held together, recognize the fear, but not let it drive the bus and let's stay in communication. Let's keep this moving. Let's keep ourselves moving. Let's keep ourselves honest because this is life transformation in action and you all are doing it we all are doing it and so with that i say ashe namaste amen hallelujah y'all got any other ones to add all of the things thank you thank you dizina uh for the, thank you and let me say before i bring frank on that um that's exactly what we're going to do, Dizina. And I'm looking at Lane, and I'm looking at Jordana, and I'm looking at Pharaoh and Frank and Kathy. We are committed 
to this to to this is the first dialogue like this but every single one we do next year is going to get deeper and deeper and deeper because we're creating a model this is what a national model needs to look like we need to talk about race so um frank what can you tell us about uh, anything that uh, you, you know right now about uh, next year or how people can get involved. Uh, and Christina put up uh, our donations thing. Uh, we can't do this. We can't continue to do this without money. It's not going to happen. So if you want to contribute or if you know other people who you want to send us to to get contributions or to do this work, do that. And so, Frank, uh, tell us about next year. In, that you know about? Okay, well, we're still working on some of the things for next year. Uh, but first and foremost, I'd just like to thank everyone that came to the event, everyone that's kind of stuck with us for the year, because I know I, I'm starting to recognize faces and names, and I'm always happy when people show up. Because um, certainly, we can't do any of this without the people that come and participate and support our efforts. Uh, it, it is literally the, the the village growing the nation is what we're, we're trying to do so we really appreciate everyone that comes out and supports us and and that's encouraging to see for next year we have a number of events on the docket right now the first one coming up will be in february i believe um the easiest way to, to keep abreast of what we're doing is um, the racialjusticecollaborative.com. I think it was posted. At, look in the comments. You can see there's an events section that shows what we have coming up. And I know all of our events happen through Eventbrite. And if you go out to Eventbrite and you see the Racial Justice Collaborative, you can follow us. And what that does is every event that we do, you'll get an email saying, you know, someone that you're following has a new event. So you can keep up that way. And again, I'd just like to really thank everyone that came out. And I know pretty soon we'll be heading to what we are loosely calling the after party. So people are more than welcome to stick around, talk some more and uh, dialogue with everybody that came here. So thank you everybody for coming. Well, thank you. And what Frank said, if you go to Eventbrite and you follow us, you will get notified every time we do something. Frank, we don't have a date yet, but Black History Month is February. So we're going to do something in February. So look for it. And uh, we invite you to stay for the after party. So Adam, can you put on the outro? Let's talk about it. This is Sundiata. Let's talk about race. Let's talk about race.